Any allies that is within 4 panels of Summer Glaciella will take 40% less physical damage. KT7 up here. Today, I will review and showcase Summer Glaciella. Another new generation tank and in my opinion, the best tank in the game. These are the items we will go over today. Let's get started. Summer Glassy is a 100 cost tank type unit in the water element. She is in the Sword Red Mage group. Has a new unique main job that can equip swords, hats, and cloth. Her sub jobs are Dragoon and Thief. Her TMR is an accessory with 364 HP, 12 defense, and 12 crit evade. The ability is a diamond shape AoE around self, increase fire and water resistance by 20 for the group for 3 turns. And for self, single target resistance up 25 for 3 turns. I really like the single target resistance but it is for self only. She has 45-42 HP, overtook Wrath as the second highest HP unit in the game. Luck is above average at 188, which can help with her crit evasion. Agility is low at 54, but has a support ability in her main job that can increase her agility and movement by 1 to make her a bit faster. Her attack type resistances are 25 to slash, 20 to strike, 10 to missile and 10 to magic. Minus 5 to pierce. These are very good starting point. Her status ailments resistances are 50 to poison, 50 to stop and 10 to doom. Awesome resistances, poison is one of the worst status effect to tanks. And you know how I hate stop. I am giving her 50 faith for lower incoming magic damage. But if you want more healing and higher chance to land stop, then go with 70 faith. Moving on to her mastery and 140 upgrades. She gets 10% max HP up and 10 single target resistance for her mastery. Her 140 gives her healing power up 15, 5 hate and her wolf clutch attack will lower target's defense penetration by 30 for 3 turns. Next let's go over her unique weapon. 15 slash attack up as the general ability, and for all sword wielding tank units, it gives them all elemental resistance up 10 when HP is above 60%. And 20 defense penetration. This weapon is so so good. The assault type is the best in my opinion, be sure to farm a couple. Now our main job support abilities. Sheik Summer Shades, gives her 15 AoE resistance, debuff reduction rate of 30, and hate up 5. Put this on her at all times. The other one is Summer Goddess, give her max HP up 12% and defense up 12. Her reaction ability is SPF 50, it has a 70% chance to reduce incoming slash and magic damage by 40%. I am loving the names of these. Next up her LB. It is a single target attack up to range 3. First increase her attack by 40% then deals damage large. And increase her AoE resistance by 40 for 2 turns. Moving over to her main job buffing abilities. This is her highest priority buff and it has a new mechanic. First gives her courage and HP auto heal back of 50% when her HP drops below half. Now the crazy part. After using this buff, any allies that is within a 4 panel radius of her will take 40% less physical damage and increase their accuracy by 40 for 4 turns. This effect cannot be dispelled. So as long as her allies are close by her, they will take less physical damage and have higher accuracy. The synergy she has with Ferris and Celis are so good. Her second priority buff is Sunscreen. Also a self-only buff, gives her elemental chain resistance 80 and protect for 3 turns. Her buffs are very straightforward, which is typical for tank units. 2 self buffs and she is ready to go. Continuing on to her attacks. The first one on the list is Wolf Clutch. Before damage, increase her defense penetration by 40 for 1 turn. Select 2 targets, deals medium damage and remove re-raise. Then lower target's defense penetration by 30 for 3 turns, and increase her defense 40 for 1 turn. This is her highest priority attack, has so many utilities. Such a great ability. Now her barrier break and barrier attack. This is similar to Resol's barrier steal. A single target attack that breaks physical barrier and deals medium damage. Then grants herself a 1 time 70% physical damage reduction barrier. Next her low AP attack. 
damage small and lower CT small. Finally, her job level 25 attack. Her only AoE attack in her main kit. It is a sure hit that deals medium damage and has a 25% chance to stop. Sure hit and stop, it is not fair. Moving over to the sub part of her main job. The first ability is an AoE up to 4 panels away in a straight line. Damage large and lower targets agility by 20% for 3 turns. Her other sub ability is a self heal. Recover small amount of HP. I like this sub job a lot. It gives her another AoE attack plus a heal. Fantastic. Okay, moving on to her Dragoon sub job. For support abilities, she gets Dragoon lore, giving her max HP up 15% and healing power up 20. The other support ability is Jump plus 1. More healing power is really good for her, I think Dragoon lore is her second best support ability. The reaction ability is Dragon's Blade, this is not bad but the range is too short. The notable abilities are Dragon's Kin and Vertical Jump. Dragon's Kin also gives her Protect, so this will be better than her main job Protect buff if you are not fighting a mono element team. The jump abilities are mainly for manual play. The damage reduction for allies still works even if Glacila is in the air. Next her Thief sub. Support abilities are Thief Lore and Acquired AP Up. Thief Lore could be useful in some situation, having higher agility and movement could be really powerful on certain maps. The reaction ability from Thief is Quick Action. I think her main job reaction is the best because it can lower magic damage. The two notable abilities are Steel Heart and Snipe Dagger. I am currently running her at 50 Faith, so Steel Heart only has a 50% chance to land on a 50 Faith unit. Having Steel Heart could be useful when going up against Evasion. But since she has a sure hit, it might not get much use. She also gets Snipe Dagger, medium damage and 25% chance to confuse. If you rely heavily on Thief, it might be a good idea to increase her faith. Now let's look at her Vision card. It is a very good one with a Vision ability. The card supports Sword Red Mage, Fist, Katana, and Book. The stats are HP 374, Attack 128, and 5 Defense. The party abilities are AoE Resistance 24, Acquired AP Up 40 and Debuff Reduction Rate 25. With this VC as main, Summer Glaciella would have 55 debuff reduction rate of at all time. Funny how this is the third AoE resistance card for strike teams. The bestowed ability is max HP up 9%. The vision ability is a self buff and can be used by most sword wielding units. It will give the user an additional reaction ability for 3 turns. 77% chance to lower incoming strike damage by 50%. This is pretty good, giving her more survivability against White Dress Alaya. But it could be difficult to get a third buff off. You could also give this ability to your other units. A week after Glassy's release we had the Dark Siren Vision card and Esper combo. I don't know when they will release this in Global. We have Dark Shiva coming after Ice Jaden, which is not too far down the line. Not sure if they will release 290 cost VCs in such a short time. It supports water and earth. The stats are HP 439, attack 166, for agility, 20 AP and 4 defense. The party abilities are agility 15%, physical man eater 13 and strike resistance of 15. Very good party abilities, agility is a must for all team building. The strike resistance will help both water and earth units survive Alaya. The bestowed are crit evasion up 10, AoE resistance 10 and evasion down 5. Top tier bestowed abilities for tanks or any non-evasive units. The Dark Siren Esper is magic based. Has 110 magic and 18 agility, which is above average. The notable board nodes are single target resistance of 5, debuff reduction rate 20, 15 lightning and magic res. And 22 accuracy. I really like the magic resistance for Glassy. But I think this Esper is best for Celis, or Raph, or Dialdo. It doesn't have defense up nor spirit up, I wouldn't call it a tank Esper. This VC Esper combo is very good, and opens the door for water and earth duo element teams. It is tailor-made to counter Alaya. It is 90 cost and not limited. 
Glassy does not need this VC to be good, the winner at the beach VC is much more important than Dark Siren. Next up her equipments and espers. I think her unique sword is her best weapon, the all elemental resistance up 10 is very strong. However, the HP absorbed from Blood Sword is also a very good choice. Her best defensive item is the Survival Vest for 15 single target resistance. The TMR slot, as always, give her agility. Ayaka's boot is a great choice, it has 12 spirit on top of 5 agility. Espers are the typical tank ones. Give her the elemental resistance that you need. Ochu, regular golem and dark golem will push her lightning resistance to above 40. Famrir has good magic resistance and slash attack, could be a good choice if you are running her alongside Celis. Then of course Dark Siren. With the plus 15 lightning resistance from her board node, it actually has plus 5 lightning resistance and plus 15 magic resistance. Can definitely help her survive lightning magic. Next her trust stones. Vital, barrier or shield sets are all good for her. Barrier and shield will give her more healing, with Dragoon's lore support, her healing power can be at plus 55. HP set will give her more HP and 5% more elemental resistance. The ability I currently have on her are HP and luck up, lightning and earth resistance up, then crit evade and strike resistance. On the offensive side, I have the agility set. The abilities are attack up and slash attack up, acquired AP up and reaction block rate up. Then water attack up and healing power up. Healing power up is a must have for her. Glassy's survivability depends heavily on healing. The healing power up from barrier and shield will help her survive longer against healing power down attacks. The shield set goes really well with Glassy's wolf and clutch attack. It lowers target's defense penetration by 30 for 3 turns. So she will take even less damage and get more healing from shield set. Now let's go over a few sample builds. The first one is the all-purpose water team. Glaciella is on her main job sub. Sheik Summer Shade support, 415 AoE resistance, 30 debuff reduction and 5 hate. Dragoon's lore for more HP and 20 healing power. Her main job reaction, SPF 50, for chance to reduce slash and magic damage. The vision cards on Glaciella are Dark Siren as main for 15% agility for the party and 10 more AoE resistance from Mistode. A vow to meet again as sub for 8% more agility, 10 lightning resistance, and 5 missile resistance. On Purine she has Dark Odin for the 50% attack up and 15 single target resistance. The Astrologer for 10 magic attack resistance, some more attack and acquired AP up. On Ferris, she has the new Summer Vision card as main for 24 AoE resistance, acquired AP up 40% and debuff reduction 25 for the party. And the Interesting Destinies as sub for 18% luck and 18 slash penetration. Glaciella is equipped with her unique sword, giving her 10 all elemental resistance. Regular Golem Esper for piercing attack resistance and some more resistance to lightning. All of her resistances are in the double digits. Her lightning resistance is at 32 in this build. If you use the vow to meet again as main, her lightning resistance will be at 42. I don't think any lightning magic units can two-shot her. She has total of 10 hate, 49 AoE resistance, 40 single target resistance, and plus 45 healing power. Her AoE resistance get be at 89 for 2 turns if she uses her LB. The goal for this team is to group up around Glaciella for the physical damage reduction. Ferris provides healing support from Sildra and Purine is the main DPS. Next up, we have two variations of the all-purpose team. The left one is the single target resistance build. The main focus is to counter strike teams. Glassy has the Phoenix Esper for more defense and strike resistance. The vision card change is the tune-up time as the main card on Purine for 20 single target resistance. And Dark Odin as sub for another 6. In this setup, Glaciella has 50 single target resistance at all times. 10 from Mastery, 20 from Main VC, 5 from Sub VC, and 15 from Survival Vest. Combining with Ferris's Strike Resistance buff, this team can take down the White Dress Alaya Strike team. Moving on to the AoE Resistance build. 
This team is good against the most meta Dark, Light and Earth teams. Golden Araman is on Glassy for more defense and slash resistance. Demon Wall will work here as well. Her AoE resistance is at 55 to start, it can go up to 95 after her LB. The vision card change is the Leviathan on Perene as a sub for more AoE risk. I should also mention, without any buffs, Ferris has 85 AoE resistance when her HP is above 70%. Next is the Anti-Magic Water Team. Glassy has the Barrier Set Trust Stone for more Spirit and Famrir Esper for 20 magic attack resistance. The Tune-Up Time VC has 5 magic resistance from the Bestowed and Astrologer card has 10 for the party. Celis is to stay close to the group and use Runic Blade. Glassy has much higher attack with Fanrir. And Ferris is to attack and provide Sildra support. Again, use Vow to meet again as the main VC if you want to boost Lightning Riss. The next team I have prepared is the Sword Red Mage team with Howlett and Ferris. I believe Howlett is the better choice than Regan. He brings magic damage which is much harder to mitigate in the current meta. All the new generation tanks are better against physical attacks, having magic threat on the team is very important. Glaciella has the Summer VC as main and Ramses card as a sub. On Howlett, since I still don't have Dark Shiva, Black Rose is on him as main for 15% agility and his own VC for Magic Man Eater and some strike resistance. Dark Odin as main on Ferris for more attack and the Sildra card as sub for the slash penetration. If I run Regan instead of Howlett, I would put the United Across Worlds VC on him as a sub for more elemental chain resistance. Next are a few more teams. You can push Glassy's Lightning Resistance to above 40% with the Vow to Meet Again card in the main slot. A Mono Lightning team will not just run Glassy over, she will give them a good fight. Water and Earth together is not ready, Luel and Ural are supported by the new Summer card but there are still too many holes to fill. A Katana team with Glassy could work but there isn't a single target resistance card yet. The Water Magic team with Summer Elsie is actually pretty good. Her 140 upgraded her title calling to have no cast time and also increased fire and dark resistance on top of the single target res. She could be a good choice of magic DPS for your team. She is supported by the new Summer VC as well as Astrius. Or we can bring back Felis for the Celis meta 2.0. I usually like to put the Gang G glove on the magic DPS unit whenever I have them on the team to maximize their damage output. Moving on to her weapon group. As you guys know, there are many crossovers between Sword Red Mage and Katana. Even more so on Global. I think a Guild Wars team with Summer Glaciella in the first slot hiding a Sephiroth will catch some Lightning Magic team off guard. Along with Glaciella's release, we can also get the mod Beach Ball from the mini raid. The general ability is all elemental attack up 10. It stacks with regular elemental attack up passives. For all the summer units, they will also get crit damage up 15 and reaction block rate of 30. Be sure to pick it up. Now my final thoughts on Summer Glaciella. She is the best tank in the game. Her buff that reduce physical damage for allies cannot be dispelled, makes it the best defensive ability in the game. It is very hard to take her down with physical attacks. Her sword will give her plus 10 all elemental resistance when her HP is above 60%. It feels like cheating along with her auto heal back. Her synergy with Ferris is out of this world. With Ferris's high AoE resistance and Glassy's damage reduction, they can just outlast the opponents. Glaciella's AI also loves to use the defense penetration down attack. Even without Ferris, she can just help your whole team survive. This unit doesn't care about her own hate value, turn the unit affinity on, and that's all you need to do. Her survivability depended heavily on her auto heal back. There are many healing power down out there, but with her debuff reduction and high healing power, she will survive. Just like Raph and Dialdo, magic is the most effective way to take her down. From the couple of matches I had against 140 Summer Helena, it took her 4-5 to five hits to take out Glaciella. If you have the Vis, you should pick her up. She is worth it. The first match of the day is against Mono Earth. With Glassy's physical damage reduction zone and Ferris' crazy AoE resistance, it is so hard for Bradley to take down this water team. 
Same goes for Dark with Sephiroth and Raph. Glassy's first turn, her Courage buff and 50% auto heal back when her HP goes below half. Plus the physical damage reduction zone effect. Any allies that is within a 4 panel radius of her will take 40% less physical damage and increase their accuracy by 40. Second action. Summer Goddess, lower elemental chain damage and protect for self. Pay attention to how many times Bradley uses calculated rend in this match. The immobilized landed on Ferris. That's fine, she doesn't need to move. Melnia's gun will lower target's healing power by 20 whenever she crits. Let's see how it affects Glassy. Okay, still healed back 9.8k. The debuff reduction is working. That's the third calculated rend and everyone is still standing. Then Ferris summons Sildra to heal the group. Once her allies are within the physical damage reduction zone, they can just stand there and soak up damage. This is the power of Summer Glassy. That's her main sub-attack skill, damage large and lower agility for 3 turns. More healing from Sildra when they try to walk over all the corpses. Melnia can inflict some nasty status effects. I will work on her 140 showcase after I am done with Jaden's. Next up is the Sword Red Mage team against Strike plus Summer Glassy. Pay attention to the damage Regan takes. If you have Dark Shiva, Howlet will be much more powerful. I think with Summer Glassy, now is the time for him to shine. I put Regan in the offside of the map so he will haste and run straight up. He is now out of the damage reduction zone. Watch the damage he takes. Alaya's stag impact did 6.8k. That's the vision card buff, give her an additional reaction ability to lower incoming strike type damage. Reagan is now back in the zone. Howlet has superb strike resistance. Plus he is within 4 panels of glassy, Perrine can't hurt him. Same attack from Alaya. Within the damage reduction zone, Reagan only took 4.1k damage. A 40% reduction. That's the defense penetration down 30 attack, plus 1 turn defense up 40. Defense penetration down attack again, this time on Perrine. Ferris and Regan are inter-exchangeable. Howlet is not. He has magic damage and dispel haste. Those are very valuable in the current meta. Next we have Mono Water going up against Mono Wind with Sada Lee and 140 Summer Jaden. This water team is all about AoE resistance and sustain. Be sure to give all three of them healing power up. Ferris with Dragon Armor Online, standing next to Glassy is so difficult to take down. Glassy's LB, single target, attack up 40% for one turn, D 
deals large damage, and increase AoE resistance for self by 40 for 2 turns. Ferris then go for her LB. Lower opponent CT, deals large damage and increase her own CT. Glassy's LB uses a lot of AP, it could be worth it to turn it off. Especially if you have an ally that can increase her AoE resistance. And it is not a very hard hitting attack, lower opponent's defense penetration might be better. Here goes, lower defense penetration and re-raise removal to take out the other Glassy. Summer Glassy is the tank that Water and Sword Red Mage were waiting for. Let me know if you are going for her. That's all I have for today. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.